Well, good morning and welcome to part two of my tutorial on um, iMovie. Um, well, actually, I suppose really this should be in part one because I just want to go back a few things that I didn't actually uh, mention is I've been using my iPhone. I'm using it at the moment. It's mounted on, um, on a tripod with a special little um, head, uh, which is about £11 off of eBay. It's absolutely marvellous. And uh, it's an iPhone 6S Plus. And it's been doing really well. I mean, I know I could uh, I could upgrade and get a nice big video camera, but it's going to cost a fortune. And uh, this at the moment seems to be okay. The only downside is that uh, when you zoom in, you really do lose image quality. So if you are using an iPhone, um, maybe the 7 is actually better, but uh, it starts to break down. So keep it at the widest angle, as I've got here. I've got it set up here, right, uh, looking at my screen. And um, where are we going to start? Well, you plug your iPhone in into a USB port and uh, normally iTunes comes up and all that nonsense and it's uh, I just don't like that there is a much easier way of doing this and simpler and that is going down to your bar here and you'll see image capture now if it's not there to start with you need to go to um, it's not always actually evident that it's in your MacBook but you can just download it or go to your uh, let's see it's the launch pad there and it may actually be in there uh, that's that's the way to do it. Go to image capture. It comes up. Uh, obviously, it's not going to recognise anything because I haven't got the camera plugged in. But here you will see image capture. Your device will come up at the top. Uh, click on that if it doesn't already automatically come up, and just go and you see the images that you've got in your phone, and just hold down the shift key, and then click up and down with the little arrows um, here on the right. Or just click them individually and they will load into a folder that you've already got pre-prepared once you've done that then we need to go back to iMovie and that obviously again may not be there at the bottom of the space bar until you actually get it from your launch pad so we click into iMovie now as I said before you create a new um, I'm actually going to be editing part two of my crossbow build and I did last night, and that was in the squashing of the plastic, which was quite tricky. Um, but I've already got them up, so I've, you would create new. It comes straight up. When you do put them all in, when you finish the project or you want to just close down, if you go to close it, it will come up, save movie, and then you can just type in your crossbow build part two or whatever it is, and that will save it to change it. So I'm going to go straight to crossbow build, and it comes up. Now what I've done, so when you drop them in, you'll see that you've got to my media. As I said before, you go to the arrow, go to your hard drive or wherever they are, bring them up, and when they come in the media, you'll see the little circles. And uh, don't drag them down until those circles have disappeared because they're all uploading. And when you drop them down, you'll see that they're all, and you can hear the volume and everything there, oh, uh, yeah. um, but they're very small. And that's because you've got this little arrow here, okay? And what you can do to expand those is just drag and slide it to the right about a third of the way along. You'll then see that all the videos are nicely stretched and then you can move along and find out where you want to crop or take pieces out or, or whatever. So we slide back, you see that so it's huge now. So go back to the beginning. Here we are and here's the first one. So I'll do Press the space button, well, and you see uh, there again, it says, I say well, um, but there's quite a gap at the beginning, so you know how to split the frame. Now you may want to, at this point, uh, add um, a title page, and you can add any uh, clip from your video by just going to where you say, say that, that looks good, that's, that's got all my uh, hacksaw and the pipe in there, and you can add the text over the top of that, so you want to save that as an image. And if you just click on that line, you'll see that there's a little circle comes up on that line there, yeah? And then you go up to the top right, to the little box with the arrow that's pointing up, and click on there, it says share. You go down there, and it says image, bottom left. And you click on that image, and it'll come up there, save as, and you can put in there um, title page, title page, and where to, well I've got it in my iFind hard drive, and then just click save, and that will go in there. You can then go to your arrow up here and import that still, 
and you can drop that in then at the beginning as I explained in part one. Okay, so I'm looking at the first frame here and um, the first thing I did is went up and increased the volume to 200%. It just seems to be about right for the iPhone. If you've got a more sensitive microphone on a video, you may not have to do that. Um, you can see little yellow highlights up here, uh, which is because I started soaring. Uh, but it's not too bad. Um, they, they're, they're not that loud. Now, I started, I'm right at the end, well, not right at the end, but I want to stop here because as you can see, I start to saw here, okay, and I've got that bit of pipe on the back there, and look, it all goes, you know, this could crash, and you, okay, that's wobbling about, I've locked it off, that's awful. So we don't want it there, we just go back to the point. A nice square finish. Finish. Nice square finish. That will do because you can see I'm cutting the pipe. There's no need to go on any longer. You want to keep your videos um, as, as short as possible. So I'm going to split it there. I'm going to take off the rest to the right because I know that the rest of it I'm just sawing, cutting, and maybe I want to come back. So we won't remove all of that. We'll just stop at that point there. Now there is a line already there, so I can just right click. <laughs> Right, bit of an error there. Of course, you have to have the cursor inside. If you have the cursor up here, it won't recognize. So you go down into the cursor and then you right clip and we can split the clip there. We then know that we've got here, we've got the end of this piece here. Now, you see, so we've got finished there. Now we've got all this and I don't want this. So you can just click, move along and here I'm filing it again, you know, that's, you know, yeah, you, you don't need to see all this really, that's just uh, extending the video too long. So we continue there, I can go forwards a little bit until I find the point where I want to get back uh, when I'm actually talking. Okay, so now I'm coming to a point where I know I want to start again. Now we've split the clip here, and keep in mind that wherever you are on the cursor, this number here that's showing you how many minutes you're actually into the video you can make notes you can write it down on a good old-fashioned piece of paper uh, but I'm going to start it here and I'm looking for me when I say now safety catch and the one for the bolt clip which has to be cut down now now there it is now I'm going to go back <laughs> until I hear I'm not sure if you're not sure about it do it again safety catch and the one for the bolt clip which has to be cut down now. Right there, so go backwards. <laughs> Let's say about there, not quite sure, but I'm gonna just split the clip there again. And then visually watch that cursor. Trigger, safety catch and the one for the bolt clip, which has to be cut down now. Right, so I, there's a little bit before the now, which is great, which means we can get rid Let's of see. all of this by just making sure it's highlighted and press delete. Right, now that's gone there. So we've now got the beginning of the video and... We'll give you a nice square finish cut down now. And there's the now. There's an end there. And then just hold on the R and click and just tiny, it just, it works with just parts of a second there. Square, finish down now. About there. Now, yes, you can put a transition in there or you can just run through. I think here, most probably transitions. So remember, you've got your transitions up here. We go for a good old favorite, cross dissolve, pop it in, see how that works. You know, I said sometimes that the that it affects the audio. So let's see what it does. A nice square, finish down now. Are we back? Not bad. There's a tiny, tiny little second or so just before that now, which I'll fine tune. So I've got two parts of the video uh, that's really sort of merged together now. And of course I would do the same with all the others. So you need that intro, as I mentioned in the first part. So you can take the still that uh, I just captured here, or you can use a background. And backgrounds are up here. And you don't get a huge amount, but you get, let's just say you want this nice organic one. Okay, so drop an organic one in there at the beginning, and there you've got a fixed background. It says four seconds. You can have it longer depending on how long you, you want the title to be up on the audio to play. Uh, so you need a title. 
And what you do with the title is you click on the titles and we'll take the centered one and put it down. And what you need to do is put it over the top so it sits like a long rectangular box. Don't try and put it over the front of it. Sometimes it will drop down inside. Make sure it's sitting on the top and then you can obviously put it there to the same amount of time as the actual background. Click up here. There's the title. So you can put all your stuff in there and then click out of it. And then that will actually play at the same time. If you see, it doesn't start right at the beginning. So just put it up to there and then start that. And there's your text coming up and there's the background well, and then it runs into concept. here obviously uh, what we'd have there is another transition which will go in and we'll keep to the cross dissolve as i said before don't go too mad or if you prefer one that you like then use that throughout so we have a background we have the text we have a transition and then of course you have your audio and remember it doesn't come up straight away when they do you can play any of those and also, interestingly, just before that came up, I will just go back to the visual. You can see the visual there, it merges from the background and you've got a little bit, so it's like a, a low opacity. You can save even an image there. So if you just click on there, like that, you see the, the dots come up. Now, sometimes that dot doesn't come up and it's really annoying, but if you just leave it there, you can sneak up to the top and you can still actually save the image. But as I say, you can save any part, even where it's transitioning. So if you get a nice effect, and I did one the other day for a friend, and uh, he was sort of pointing to something, and then the other hand, and it all merged, and it looked, it, it really did look um, uh, Da Vinci. It's great. So um, keep that in mind. Just a couple of other things. So I, I experienced, I was in my workshop next door uh, outside, and suddenly they were chatting, there was children laughing and playing around. And you can go up to the top here, and all of these, you need to explore these. There's a graphic equalizer here, and if you click that, let's make sure I get it onto the frame. If you click there, you'll see it says reduce background noises. And it's set at 50%. So what you do is you just click the box there, like that, and it will reduce all the background noise on that frame. And it's not bad, it doesn't take them out altogether. Uh, but it's it does a pretty good job. Uh, remember, you've you've then got to the right of that. You've got speed, so you've got normal. But at any point, if you haven't shot in slow motion, you can still slow things down. Now, remember, slow motion is actually running at about 240 frames a second, and I'm only filming here at 30 frames a second. Um, you have the option of, of 60 frames a second, and also um, 4K, but really for the purpose of um, YouTube and all these, I find 30 frames is fine. But you can slow things down, and you can also, just as you, when I said when you hold down the R and you click, you can position you can actually select an area like that. Now you can do all sorts of things with that area you've selected. I did one the other day when I was outside of a church and I got the volume and I was talking away and then as soon as I walked into the church, I dropped my voice. Out of respect most probably, um, but it was. And uh, so I selected that area, that rest of that when I was in the church, went up and changed the volume of just that bit. So it went from 200 and I upped it to 400, which is the maximum you can go on this. And that's marvellous. Uh, so you can select it, you can change the volume, you can just select any of these to um, uh, reduce background noise. Um, the other one here, which is marvellous, um, if you're not using a tripod and you're handheld, now the image stabilising on this, uh, this phone is really good, uh, but you can stabilise a little bit more. And it says there, stabilise shaky video. Again, just hit the little square there. It's working it out, analysing for dominant motion, and it looks as if it's not actually just taking the bit I've selected. So it looks as if you can't do that. You have to have the whole frame. It normally works. Sometimes it doesn't, and it just goes all weird. Uh, don't panic, because if that happens, you can just click that off, and it goes back. Now, you've also got uh, cropping, and you've got the old Ken Burns up here. And this is great. So if you actually want to zoom in, you think, oh, I've got too much of the view here. Just take the bottom left corner, and just pull that to there, and you see that it's actually cropped that. Click out of that, and you'll find there that that's actually gonna crop, and it'll just show that part of the image. Uh, here we have a palette, a color palette, and you can adjust your brightness and all your contrast. You can darken down, you can lighten up, you can change your 
color range here, almost to black and white. Uh, it's just like working in Photoshop in stills. Um, it's really not that difficult, just once you play around with it. And then you've got um, white balance and matching your color and skin tone balance, all sorts. Uh, play around with those. And um, if I find anything else that's worthy of a mention, I'll make, um, I'll make part three. But just a little PS here um, regarding the transitions. I just, uh, you know, you go up there, you click, you drag it down. But you don't have to do that. It seems that uh, you can see where my cursor is here and I want to put a transition in here. Uh, all you do is go up. It seems that the bar is just there. It doesn't really matter where it is. If I put it there, if I double left click, boom, boom, transition straight in. So that saves a bit of time. Sometimes when you're playing around the transitions and then you go to click uh, to play again and it just shows the transition coming up uh, and uh, you can't seem to get onto your video at all. Every time you just press, you just get these transitions. So what you need to do is just go uh, up here and just say click onto audio. It doesn't really matter what you do. As long as you get out of the transitions and you click and you can, you can hear straight away as you're moving around you're back in there again. Right, so just another find. Um, here. When I've warmed this piece up and it's not all bubbling and... Right, so bubbling and burnt. I've cropped it, uh, chopped it off too soon. But don't panic because although you've removed that bit, you can bring it back by just getting over to the end and pulling that and you've gone past there now. I've warmed this piece up and it's not all bubbling and burnt and then hit it there. Uh, I think I must have just gone a little bit. So then hold down the R and pull that there. And now we should have. Now, we'll just um, chop in a transition there. Because that my audio is right at the end, it may interfere with it. So let's just do a double left click. There it is. And try it from there. Oh, now you see it's, it's done that silly transition thing again. So just go to, say, audio, doesn't matter, back, down here. This piece up and it's not all bubbling and burnt. And there you go, the transition worked and it didn't interfere with the audio.